Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hey guys, this is Rob. Welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 85, and our friends gave us a rock. Not just a little rock, a big rock. Why did they give it to us? (laughs) Stay tuned. So yeah, we got some good friends that have an RV out at uh, uh, Fort McDowell, and their names is... uh, (laughs) <laughs> Their names are <laughs> Lori and Todd, and they own Diversified RV Repair. And they don't get to travel much because he's so busy repairing RVs. I think they're even having a hard time getting out, but they want to leave at the first of the month of May, which this is the first. And yes, I am late on getting my episode out. Very busy. So anyway, so Lori contacts us, and we've had him over for dinner, and they're nice people. And he helps us with our RV and has done some of our repairs. And some of our old videos, if you get a chance to go back to some videos, uh, uh, th- that was Todd that actually was doing some of the work for us. Uh, especially when we were doing the black tank uh, clean out and pressure to pressure pressure washing and stuff. So Lori sends me this note She's go- and she's talked about this rock she's got. So it's like, all right, I'll take a ride out there. So I hop in the car and I always like to go see him. And Cinder loves to go. It's a great road trip for Cinder, and she gets to go see her buddies. And so uh, we drive out there, and uh, I didn't see Lori, but uh, Todd was busy fixing another RV. Luckily, it was right by his rig. And uh, I pull up, and uh, uh, not to mention, by the way, there's a a fire not that far away from there. And so uh, everybody's kind of watching to see how close the fire was getting to the park. Uh, Not a problem, but... um, Anyway, uh, so Todd walks over and grabs this big old rock that they've had. And I got the story, and I'll just give you a brief story about the rock. But they've had this rock even when they had their house. And they've been transporting this rock from site to site or space to space. And uh, it's a pretty red rock. And uh, anyway, I'll, maybe I'll put a picture of it in our uh, introduction icon. And so, luckily, I didn't know it, but Todd goes over, grabs the rock, and goes, oh, yeah, Lori wanted you to take this home with you. And I was like, I was trying to forget. But anyway, so, and actually, it was a very pretty rock. And we have a really pretty front yard that we could put it in and it would blend with the flowers really well. And we have some other red rock out there, too. So, he grabbed it, and I opened up the truck, and he threw it in there. He did look like he was turning purple a little bit. <laughs> But he's a young, tough guy, at least 15 years younger than I am. And, of course, he works in RV, so he's very fit, so no no big deal. But I got to tell you, when I got home and I pulled up the truck, opened up the back, grabbed a rock, and I'm thinking, because he made it look so easy, I grabbed this rock, and uh, it was one of those, I can't breathe because I'm trying to hold this. I don't know what the darn thing weighed, but I was one heavy, heavy rock. And they've been transporting this thing with an RV for quite a while. Anyway, so I got this beautiful rock in my front yard from Lori and Todd. And it's gorgeous. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I don't know if they'll ever come back and pick it up again. <laughs> Hopefully my little beautiful little flower I put in around it. So you can't take it. It's got a pretty home. And uh, anyway, but so <laughs> uh, I've got the rock. So... Thanks. Now that I got a hernia, I'm just kidding. But anyway, so the exciting part for them is so they've been working diligently through the seasons and they're going to actually do a five month endeavor on their fifth wheel heading up to the northwest. Uh, I believe they want to do Oregon and Washington and I believe they're going to go to uh, Montana, Idaho, Um kind of a big loop and they're going to try to do it in a five month span and try to be back in the fall to be able to kind of pick up where they left off with their RV repair business. And so they've been saving, saving, saving like crazy. And so um, I'm very happy for them. I'm, I'm, I wish them the best, uh, uh, the best. (laughs) And uh, 
I think it'd be a great adventure. Now they haven't really done any long-term um, trips like this before, and they're using a, about a forty-foot um, toy hauler, and it's a beast. And so it will be really interesting to see how their adventures go. So they haven't picked up and go, picked up and go kind of thing for a long time, or I don't even know if they've even done it yet. So they're going to head up to Flagstaff first and kind of get broken in and get their routine down and see how it goes from there. And then uh, it will be interesting to see how they start um, moving throughout the different states. So um, my uh, best wishes to them. I hope they have a great trip. And they're heading up to my old hometown and stuff. So we we're hopefully able to give them some good ideas of places to go and places to stay that fit their rig real well and places that they, uh, uh, you know, don't waste their time because five months is going to go fast. And I assume that they're going to try to be back here by October, I believe. And so uh, that'll go fast. It doesn't, it seems like a long time. I believe it's four to five months. And that time will fly by. And so, anyway, uh, it should be quite the adventure. And it's, I think it's an area that they've never been at before. So, uh, they'll like the evergreen states and stuff um, for a while, at least. And uh, I think they'll appreciate the things that we have here in Arizona that uh, you take for granted. And so, sometimes you need to kind of leave your area and stuff. So, yeah. Anyway. Best of luck on your trip, you two, and <laughs> I hope you have a ball, <laughs> and I really hope uh, everything goes well for you, and our prayers are out for you to be safe and have fun, guys. And then I have a beautiful daughter, daughter named Emily that's, uh, that's along with them. She's 16. She's a sweetheart, uh, and she's... Uh, I, I she was over at the house the other day and we're, we're looking at the boat because Todd I was having checks up on the engines. Man, she's right in there. She's a beautiful girl, but a tomboy at the same time. And I got to give her a thumbs up. So it was really nice to meet her. A very polite girl, and uh, I hope she enjoys the trip that they're going on. So good luck, everybody, and have a good time. Well, I know there's a lot of controversy about our politics and uh, everything going on, but one of the things I do want to have my fingers crossed on is the health care. And reason being, that's kind of one of the reasons that took Sherry and I off the road full time is because the Obama care um, or Affordable Care Act uh, was just too expensive. It was actually as I may as well have had a mortgage payment because uh, it was almost about the same amount of money. If we went independent and had to use our own, you know, had to get our own insurance. So uh, anyway, uh, it would be really interesting. Uh, one of the biggest issues I've seen and heard about is the fact of uh, going from state to state. My understanding on Obamacare is uh, uh, for some of your primary things that you have to do, you have to return back to the same state that you originally set it up at. And uh, traveling uh, has some of its... Uh, has some issues. The other two things which you've heard me talk about before is the uh, monthly uh, payments for your insurance depending on what you make per year uh, get really high and then the other thing was the deductibles were just totally ridiculous like six thousand eight thousand and it's like what you know uh, being that we're relatively uh, healthy and I have no idea how bad prescriptions are with that program. But um, so we, Sherry and I, is pretty much was be office checkups and, and um, health care kind of checkups and, and things at our age, but nothing major. And so uh, we would probably never get any benefit of spending twelve to 1600 a month for insurance. It would be absolutely useless to us. Now, of course, you've heard us say before that Sherry's working down here and stuff. We have great health care. Um, and uh, so that's one of the reasons why we had to come off the road full time is not that we have any health issues, but we could. And if we do, that can be devastating. That's one of the things that one of the first things that can take you down, man, financially. So uh, until we get 65 uh, we may not have the option to be able to go full-time again because of the health insurance. However, 
I don't know what this new health insurance plan looks like if they pull it off, and they will probably. Uh, I truly hope, I mean, obviously, I know people have different concerns about uh, already having uh, sicknesses and stuff they want covered, but um, a big part for us would be affordability and usability uh, in different states, and of course, deductibles. Um, I know, so... Uh, I do remember back in 2005, six, Sherry and I got, uh, I had my own business at the time. We traveled for a while. We went to eHealth something online, set up a nice program for more for emergencies and stuff like that. But we certainly didn't have deductibles that high. And we were able to set up a, a pretty relatively good uh, uh, program for us when we traveled then. But that's unheard of today's program. So anyway, I'm a little ignorant on the whole subject as a whole, but it'll be interesting to see how things develop in the future. Now, uh, I'm not talking about the politics as I am just having a new program. So uh, let's leave it at that. I don't want to get any battles about who's who, Republican, Democrat. I don't need to hear that kind of stuff. I just, But I am anxious to see what the new medical program is, especially when you're independent, whether you own your own business or you have a nest egg and you don't, don't have Medicare yet. Uh, that kind of insurance would be really nice to have uh, uh, that is affordable and actually is something you could actually use. So anyway, future will tell. So... Changing subject a little bit, my daughter has enlightened me with something that was very interesting. So, you guys, you know, if you have kids and they've had kids and so they have a family and they're running around like a chicken with a head off, cut off constantly, just stuff for the kids, maintaining a household, their jobs, insanity 24 7. And my daughter keeps exposing us to, and it's pretty cool. But, and it does sometimes cost more, but t it depends on how you measure time. If your time is worth money, then this stuff is worth it. So she's pointing out now that, I mean, one of the biggest pain in the butts they have is having to go to the grocery store all the time. And so they're looking at, there's kind of like this new service out there. It's kind of like Uber, but it's not for picking you up and going places. It's to run errands for you. I mean, they'll literally go pick up a pizza for you. They'll literally go to the store. Uh, you can make grocery orders and stuff, and, and they go pick it up for you. Um, it's And then they kind of, on this app, they pretty much says, okay, we're going to charge you five ninety nine dollars to go pick up and bring this to your house, and then you need to tip them too. So uh, it's going to cost you 5 to 10 bucks for someone to do those errands for you. But, hey, if you're getting paid uh, $30, $40, 50 an hour, uh, that's well worth it. If your time is worth that much and, and yeah, even when you're not on, you know, at work and stuff, your time is worth money. And so what a neat program, I think. And so that's, what's cool about having younger, you know, kids to try this stuff. So if it works out good, what a neat program. So what I suggest is if, if people are interested in something like that, uh, I'll try to get more information about some of these online services, but uh, if you're in an RV park in a different state and stuff and you look up these services, you know, it might be easier just to have them deliver some of your um, groceries or certain things you want. Uh, even some pizza stores or places that you like to go, they only have like a three, five, maybe a 10 mile radius that they'll even deliver to. And maybe you're 15 miles out. Uh, some of these little I, they're not Uber drivers, but they're just like Uber drivers, uh, can help you out with some of this stuff. And so if you really think it over, it'd be kind of nice for you know having certain things you can get on, get online, make your order at Safeway or Walmart and uh, all these different places that now do online ordering, even groceries and things like that, and have them delivered uh, could come in handy even while you're traveling. Now, if you're one of these, you know, uh, budget millennials out there trying to do these uh, stuff, they're trying to save money, not probably going to work for them. But for uh, folks that are retired or 
close to retiring or, or, or have some health issues and stuff. Uh, what a great service if you think about it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people traveling in RVs that have some uh, uh, big health issues. And so, yeah, it would be a very helpful service. So check it out, guys. As I learn more, I'll talk about it more in this show. But online deliveries um, is becoming a big thing. And it could be, I mean, I'm talking a Pizza Hut or uh, some sandwich shops or Subway. Let's say you want to get a bunch of Jimmy John's or something. Well, they deliver. Um, but some of these other places that um, uh, don't normally deliver, but they'll make a to-go package. You could have an Uber driver pick it up and bring it to you. And, uh, you know, some of you guys go, oh, it's really lazy. Well, no, it's, if you understand people's lives are different and, some, and if, if they have health issues or just busier and heck, what a great service. So check it out, guys. There's new things happening out there to make uh, life easier for the busy people. And uh, <laughs> uh, at first I kind of scoffed at it, but I, I do know that why we've been getting busy over here. Uh, I have a hard time just getting a, a radio show done, let alone all the other new endeavors I've been involved in. And that's the next thing I'm going to talk about is a new endeavor. So in life, you know, everything changes. I don't care what you think. <laughs> things will always change. And so you can see that even in the channels over time. Now, some of you guys are brand new to RVing and some of you have been around for a while. And if you follow certain channels, you see some of them have gone off to sailing, some have bought a boat, some are uh, getting off the road. Uh, the Higgins this had to just because of age and health and, and things change. And so that's why one of the reasons why we aren't just RVs. Uh, we also have, you know, our channels, Outdoor Travel Channel, and that's where you find RV Talk Radio. But you'll find on our channel we have fishing and we have uh, boating and we have cooking and all kinds of fun things, activities to keep us healthy and busy, busy, busy. And so we're trying to connect to the people that, yeah, if you're an RVer, great. If uh, you're just like camping, great. If you just like cooking outdoors and stuff, cool. You like boating and cruising? Cool. Uh, we even have a little sailing on there, even though we didn't buy a sailboat. And so the newest endeavor you'll see come out on our channel this week is, I don't know how much of it will be, but, uh, you know, one of the benefits of being back in a home again is doing some of the things that I have uh, you know, haven't done in years or always wanted to do. And one of the big things to me was growing tomatoes. And so uh, my, my tomato plant's going nuts. And what a great place to grow tomatoes. But I tell you, if you have tomatoes down here in Arizona, the secret is, well, of course, a little bit of fertilizer, but water. Oh, my gosh. I, I have to give my tomato plant, which is one, in a big barrel type thing. I just got two plants. It's going nuts. And um the secret is giving it a gallon or more water a day. Uh, tomatoes, I mean, this is, uh, if you read the instructions, it says like every two to three days. Not in Arizona, I'm telling you. Water, 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 low fertilizer. Things going absolutely crazy. So that was really cool. But that's not what I was here to talk about. I want to talk about the other endeavor. And the new video is coming out uh, tomorrow. And as a series, is we I've always wanted to get a really nice aquarium. Yep, aquarium. So what you're gonna see is a build out of us putting in a 60 gallon aquarium in our house. And uh, boy, what an endeavor that's been! Oh my gosh, it's just like RVing. You know, you get an RV and you go, what? I gotta know about black tanks. What? I gotta know about solar. Oh, I gotta understand batteries. I got to understand how to fix things. Well, same thing with a house and you try new endeavors, but never be afraid. And that's what's cool about RVing is RVing is uh, travel and RV freedom. Uh, that's a dare, it's like dare to go try it. You don't have to be an expert at first. And just like our new videos coming out on our uh, setting up a, it's actually called setting up a 60 gallon aquarium uh, is for beginners and is even... <laughs> When you do shows like ours, you always have that first video you do, and then you go back a year later and look at it and go, God, I was an idiot. Um, you just uh, you just laugh it off and learn and learn and learn and learn. And just the other day, 
Gone with the Winds just did a one year video about them sailing. And the best advice they had was if you want to go sailing or some form of transportation like that, um, do it. Just start doing it and and roll with the punches. Uh, they had lots of in things that, uh, as they got started. They go, oh, we got to learn how to sail. Oh, I got to, you know, uh, insurance issues. And oh, I got to learn how to get certified. Oh, uh, I got to repair this thing. Um, all kinds of great advice. Well, same thing when you're uh, trying new hobbies. And this one, since I'm not in an RV and I could never even consider doing it in an RV, uh, I always wanted a really nice aquarium. And the other thing I like is, is you know, uh, you may think I'm old home fuddy-duddy, but we have side business. We actually own a corporation called Cutting Edge Enterprises. And so what you don't see behind the scene is we actually host some of our RV co's, um, RV friends, uh, their websites, and, and actually maintain some RV park websites. Uh, so uh, it's a little extra income. And since I'm retired and I just get a pension, I ch my job, I always feel like, is one is to save money, which sometimes I do great and other times I don't. <laughs> uh, but keep our costs down, find bargains for our household, and to have endeavors to earn a little extra money. So I own a boat, right? Well, I got to put gas in it, and when we use it, we got to keep it in a... So, so if I'm making a few hundred or so uh, extra income a month, that's I kind of look at that's the support my play toys. Um, and no, when you guys donate to our site or do our support stuff or Patreon, that actually goes back to the company. But um, but all in all, when the company makes a profit, those toy uh, that money actually sometimes gets reinvested, and sometimes the owners we actually pull it, and that's to us to put put against uh, you know gasoline for the boat or uh, 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 putting our RV in a space for a month uh, to do these shows and, and do the stuff that we do and enjoy. So, yeah, and that's a kind of uh, fun kind of business. I've had most, you know, very serious businesses too and stuff. So uh, I've had uh, chains, uh, I've actually owned my own chain of uh, kite stores and we've done annexation businesses and we've done all kinds of interesting stuff in our lives. And, and uh, um, but yeah, to be able to earn a few extra bucks um, on the side is always fun because that's our play money. Uh, or gas money, you might say, to support the toys we have. If I put all my toys <laughs> in the water and in and play, uh, Sherry and I would be really scraping for dough. So, yeah. Uh, so, um, anyway, so getting back to the aquarium thing, there's some things in the aquarium or aquatics that might be a chance to make some extra income on the side, either by selling tropical fish or the plants or uh, uh, doing some services around here in Arizona uh, to help support other people with big tanks and stuff like that. Uh, it's a great way to make some extra money. <laughs> and so uh, I may have been a white collar worker, but I still don't mind doing some blue collar work if, I, uh, if I'm enjoying myself. So uh, yeah, we're all there. So yeah, you always hear me belly aching about all these work camping and things like that, but um, you you know, get to our age, you can actually do, if you still like to work, you should be doing something you like to do. So anyway, my next endeavor, endeavor was learn from the bottom up. And I'm talking about scraping the bottom of the barrel as far as learning how, what we know about um, aquariums. Anyway, so you're going to hopefully get a kick out of watching me and Sherry try to figure out how to set up a 60 gallon aquarium which sounds easy not so and you'll see us struggle with terminology and vocabulary and all the things because we've never done it before and that's what makes it fun and so if you're not embarrassed to stumble a little bit and there's something you want to do out there do it guys and whether it's RVing or travel or camping or or uh, uh, buying a piece of equipment you never used before or boondocking and you've never done it, the best thing to do is just throw yourself into it and hopefully you'll pick up some good friends that help coach you along the way. We've met some great people and we've been uh, 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 watching a lot of their stuff. Even an RVer, uh, Three Tails RV, uh, Aaron Jimerson, uh, he used to be into tropical fish and I think it's called Pas uh, Passionate for Angels. He liked angelfish. 
um, has a nice channel of some uh, tips of how to maintain and set up tanks and things like that. So yeah, you'd be surprised how many RVers actually have been involved in aquatic things. So yeah, anyway, that was a new endeavor I thought I'd share with you. Time to move on. And I wanted to make sure to remind you guys, uh, I, for some reason I, I was kind of expecting to get my ear chewed a little bit from the last show. But uh, I think a lot of people are getting to know me enough that I just bring up positive, negative type things of uh, different uh, scenarios in RVing. And so I, I, what I'm always looking for is a healthy discussion. And actually, I get great comments from last show and stuff. And most of them was like, I agree with you 100%. I was like, wow. <laughs> So anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate that. But uh, at the same time, professionally, um, uh, to have uh, issues you want us to talk about. Uh, remember, it's a radio show. It's a talk show. And so, yeah, we may talk about things that rile you up. And that's healthy. And if you have want to defend something I might have said that might have perturbed you a little bit in a professional way, uh, I certainly can have my, you know, uh, mind changed i'm open-minded just like uh in politics guys I, I, you know <laughs> i'll bring it up there's both sides of the conversation there's the republicans democrats things like that no matter how the pendulum goes i still support whoever that person turns turns out to be and uh if i'm so upset about it and stuff i just uh, I'll, next election i'll have to uh get involved a little more so Anyway, same thing with uh, RV stuff. I uh, bring up things that may be sensitive or perturb some people or think that I might be against them or something. Uh, mine is just food for thought. And so, especially when it comes to the young RVers. So anyway, but yeah, thanks for the great feedback. We had some good stuff. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is don't forget that you can contact us through our website at rvtalkradio.com and just go to the contact page. Or you can go to our Facebook pages and shoot us a comment or shoot us a message. And last but not least, you know, we may make a, a YouTube version of the show. This is a normal podcast, but we also make a, a video version of this for those that just don't like to set up podcasts. Um, and you can leave us comments on YouTube, too. Also, a reminder, if you're uh, new to podcasts, don't forget you can actually download a free software and several versions i use podcast addict uh you put it on your cell phone and then you just go into the search area and put in the subject like rv travel if that's one of your hobbies and stuff you type that and say search and show me all the shows for rv travel we pop right up uh the other thing is uh, you may be involved in like maybe shooting or maybe you like uh hunting or maybe you like uh um basket weaving, whatever you want to do, uh, type that subject in. There'll be a podcast about it. And it's really nice when you can kind of turn your cell phone into a radio. And then, like you notice, a lot of us do about an hour show, sometimes less, depending on what's going on. Um, you don't have to listen to the whole thing all at once. You just listen to little portions of it. And, and people at work sometimes use the YouTube process. And they'll listen to our show uh, for like five, ten minutes during lunchtime and get through the video through the whole week and then get through the whole show. So that's why these shows tend to be so long is because people kind of listen to us in a long period of time throughout the week. And so, yeah, that's how podcasts work. So if you get a chance to set up a podcast um, on your PC or on your cell phone, a uh, great way to go. And once again, there's the video version, and we love hearing from you. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, all we ask is you to be professional. So there. Changing the subject a little bit, we were out at the RV the other uh, last week, of course, when I went to go get my big rock. And uh, <laughs> I still, it still fascinates me here in Arizona. Uh, I never see the critters, but if you get out to the critters, uh, you're going to have to be, you know, in in real desert area, uh, on the outskirts of Arizona. Uh, yes, they do show up in the, in, you know, in the cities and stuff. But uh, outskirts, if you want to see wildlife, it's amazing how much wildlife is in the desert. From really cool lizards and birds. Oh, my gosh, the birds around here are just amazing. But <laughs> on my way out of the RV park, <laughs> I'm driving out. And sure enough, there's a rattlesnake going across the road towards the RV park, which I was like, oh, geez, guys. 
Anyway, but <laughs> this was a very mad uh, snake. Then uh, he was in the middle of the road. Nobody uh, in their right mind should try to run him over. Uh, but a lot of times you have to run over the top of them and, and be careful not to run them over because usually uh, just a small four to five footer, you're not going to run them over. You just got to slow down a little bit and go kind of carefully and go over the top of them, but don't run them over. But I had a laugh at this one because it was a car ahead of me, did the same thing, went over them, but didn't run them over. And then by the time I was coming up, his head is up off the ground. He's pissed. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I should have stopped and got some pictures and stuff, but I was, I was kind of in a hurry. And, it, you know, this is like the third or fourth one I've seen over time. It's taken a year and a half just to see three. And I try to kind of see them and i want to see them i don't get out in the desert and go nuts and try to find them and i certainly never go out in the desert uh, when it's hot like this with cinder i don't care if she's on a leash or not i keep her away from the desert i just love her too much to have a stupid little thing like her sticking her nose in a bush and there's a snake in there and uh you know and snakes they really um i i nobody hates the snake more than i do but, uh, you know, they deserve to live, and two, uh, they have a purpose in life, and two, most of the time they don't want nothing to do with you. So vigilance is the big thing down here. But it was really cool to see the snake in the middle of the road going, his head up is like, stop it, stop driving over the top of me. I'm trying to get across this road. He was ticked off. And I should have pulled over and took some pictures. I didn't have any of my normal cameras with me. I would have only had my, my cell phone. But... Uh, it probably would have been some great shots because I was one ticked off uh, some rattlesnake. So anyway, good old Arizona. The critters live here, but they're beautiful. And uh, just like here in where I live, what I can't get over is how many rabbits we have around here. And so I got these uh, prickly pear, uh, you know, cactuses, which are real common. They look like uh, ping pong paddles. You've seen those. Anyway, this time of year, they get these beautiful blooms on them, beautiful colors. So mine will bloom, and I'll look at it. And so now I've learned, take a picture of it, because the next morning, the bloom's gone. And I'm pretty sure those pesky little rabbits are eating my blooms, um, and, and it's okay. If, it, if, it, if they like them, they eat them, and they're cute, and the plant's still growing. It's not killing them or anything. I just don't get to see my flowers very long. But uh, and, and I might have been known, in fact, I think I have, in fact, I have, I've been putting uh, carrots in the front yard for the little bunnies. <laughs> and they're cool. I also got a pet gecko. Uh, seriously. Anytime we turn the outside light and stuff, we get these kind of uh, albino geckos that come up around and they'll scare you if you're not, the first time they terrified me, I just, you know, I, <laughs> but it's just they're not gonna hurt they like to go by the lights and catch the bugs so if you turn your outside lights on and leave them on in the evening and the little geckos will come out and hang out around my light to catch bugs and uh, uh once you get past the creepiness that they're geckos <laughs> it's really cool it's like so now when we get home and had the lights on especially when we went out in the evening come home it's like the first thing we do is are the geckos here? We're looking for the geckos. And so we've had up to three little albino geckos hanging out at the light in the front porch, uh, which is just really cool. So uh, anyway, Arizona, I, I can't stress enough how much wildlife is here. And some of it's dangerous, of course. And uh, of course, it's starting to warm up here. So um, anyway, so going out in the desert, you're... Um, if you're in lowland, uh, you got to start looking out for some of them critters, and especially if you have a pet. And you keep hearing me preach about that, but I, I still watch people let their dogs run free in the desert and stuff. And then, uh, you know, the dog gets hurt, and they're like, I don't understand this, how this could have happened. It's like that's, they're trying to get out of the opportunity to have to use a poopy bag to pick up after the dog so they'll let them run free. And it's like, come on, that's you just can't do that here. And uh, there is a time when it gets cool enough around here that all those critters are in their dens and they hang out for the winter and you don't see them. Uh, it's, then it's not too bad to let your um, your pets loose around the desert area. Um, but uh, it's a very short period of time. And, and even so, it still could have something happen. If they find a den, then you're up against, you know, 50 to 100 
uh, rattlesnakes all at once. Now, they're really sleepy and dopey at the time, but, you know, uh, they can still be perturbed. So, you know how dogs are. Anyway, so, you know, I don't know what the heck I was first talking about. <laughs> But I go off on a tangent. But yeah, rattlesnakes. It was pretty cool. Anyway, let's move on. So I was doing my normal Facebook cruising through the different groups and stuff. And uh, typically one of the big things I always worry about uh, is... And I, and this is not just for RVing, but you got to remember people post their perfect time of their life so in 24 hour span maybe you have a special moment for five or ten minutes and that's the one you capture and that's what you put on Facebook so a lot of people and this is true with teenagers and, and social issues and stuff like that that some people get in that mode that they think uh, uh, everybody's got a better life than them and so you just got to remember uh, it's not that hard which and it's a positive thing to do to post your um, highlight of your day or your week um, on Facebook um, it's just like you know we got the aquarium and we're starting to post that on our Facebook and you see this beautiful aquarium but they didn't see the four hours of cleaning rocks and sitting and painting the backside in the garage and I got blue paint everywhere and and uh, you know you don't see all that you just see the finished product going oh man I love to have an aquarium too same thing with RVing it's like oh yes see this beautiful sunsets every day you see a sunset from somewhere and stuff but uh, uh, my biggest point in all that is uh, make sure well anyway uh, uh, on Facebook today it was just kind of like wow it was a lot of reality posts I was actually um, I think one person blew a tire and blew uh, damaged their electrical. I was lucky when I blew our tire as we didn't have any electrical or pipes under there. So that's one of the other reasons when you're traveling to make sure you turn off your propane because some propane lines actually pass by the wheel wells. And if you blow a tire, you could actually start a fire and, and then you get to watch your fifth wheel burn up in smoke. Uh, so that's one of the reasons they ask you then they tell you you shouldn't have your refrigerator on and propane on when you're traveling and that's true not with just a fifth wheel but a trailer and also a motorhome uh, the other thing I was seeing was um, uh, problems with uh, black tanks again electrical issues things like that it was a lot of people posting a lot of things that uh, that uh, for once I was seeing a lot of truce out there of, is like uh, anyway so be aware of that find a good if you're just new to RVing and you're signing up for a couple of the groups um, pick some of the ones that aren't always telling the happy story and that's kind of the thing we get here on RV talk radio is like Rob you're uh, you're a Debbie Downer sometimes and it's like no I don't mean to be I, I keep telling you we love RVing I just want to make sure that we're a show that tells you what really is going on out there and so and once again we focus on the lifestyle so sometimes we get into that intimate kind of stuff um, we are not how to fix it we're not uh, RV repair and stuff we will tell you about our stories and stuff but we're into these lifestyles and all the different ways people use RVs and so but I think the important thing is is we want to be a show that I was like okay um, I still want to be an RVer but Rob mentioned this and this and I'll keep that in mind and that's if we've helped one person and that's great and uh, and um, we identify with some of the unique ways of using an RV that's what we're all about and uh, uh, and and the misconceptions I get so worried about that is we see these great videos and uh, and you remember I, it's just like Facebook it's a picture of people's lives during their best time and it could be five minutes long or an hour's worth but uh, you gotta remember that's all you're gonna see on these channels and Facebook's is usually that precious great wonderful time which we all have but there's also another 23 hours in our lives that are the realities that got us to that point so even if I tell you the negative or, or expose something that shocks you it's still to get you to that 
particular time that you go, wow, this was all worth it. You know, ups or downs, whatever. It was worth it, and I got here from hard work, just like this aquarium we're building is an example of that. A lot of hard work, a little dabbling, make some mistakes, people laugh at us, we jockey it around. When we're done, it will be beautiful. And we'll sit back and reap, you know, reap the rewards until something breaks. <laughs> or we got to change the water. Or a fish dies. Or we like, something's going to happen. And so, and then you get it all fixed up again. And you make some changes, tweak it in, and get back to that. Oh, it's beautiful. So, you know, you make the video then. But that other few days in between where the water balance goes out or pump goes out or leaks something all over the floor or uh, kill a fish uh, those aren't going to be on the videos <laughs> we might talk about it but it's like oh no we're not going to tell you how we uh, all of our fails we're just going to tell you the one time where the aquarium looks a hundred percent and that's what you think it's all like and it's like no 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 we want to tell the whole story whether it's an aquarium or whether it's RVing so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> there you go, guys. Well, that's the end of the show. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm, I'm actually very late. I mean, I'm actually recording this the same day that I'm posting it. And it usually comes out in the morning. But uh, the aquarium and some of our other projects, I was busy, man. Anyway, so I'm sorry for being late. Uh, this, here we are. <laughs> anyway, i uh, got lots of things to talk about. A lot of endeavors coming up. Lots of things coming up in the future uh, with our uh, RV and uh, uh, boating and some cruising stuff. And uh, heading up to Washington someday. I don't know when I'm going to get that done. Anyway, so I want to thank everybody for your feedback. Love your stories. Uh, thanks for listening. I, every week I keep seeing our subscriptions go up and up and up. And uh, uh, don't judge it by the, the video. The video is an extra thing we do. And uh, typically we do 100 or 200 a, a week on those. And that's cool. On views. And so we appreciate that. But it's just we have a few folks that just don't like to listen to podcasts. But they don't mind the video version. So we do that for a, a little extra. So anyway, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. From me and Sherry, we wish everybody a safe journey. Enjoy the summer. And for those that are in Arizona, head north. For those that are in the north, enjoy the north. <laughs> and, and, when it gets, and when it gets too cold up there, come on down. We'd love to see you. So anyway, talk to you later. Be safe. And thanks for listening. Bye, guys. Bye.